So let's show you here, 22000.65. So this is the latest version that's publicly released to the developer channel. Windows 11 Pro, all the hardware and everything is the same as before. Now I'm gonna show you a bunch of tweaks in here to make this more like an operating system and less like a tablet. The first thing that I like to do I've already done it here, is to remove all of the recommended apps. I don't want them here. I want to choose all of the apps that I'm gonna use. So I would prefer in a later build, hopefully they make it so you can completely get rid of recommended and you can just make this entire section pinned. So that way it's more like an app drawer like Android. Open it and then everything is there. That would be ideal. But in case that isn't something that you're into, I'm gonna show you how to enable the old start menu. So first we have to hit the Windows key and R to open run and we're going to type in reg edit. Now in here we're going to go to current user, software, Microsoft, and then scroll down to Windows right here. Now current version, explorer, and then under advanced. So now in here we're going to create a new 32-bit D word. So we're going to right click the advanced folder here, go to new, and then D word 32-bit value. So this is going to be called start underscore show classic mode. And now we're gonna change this value from zero to one. So now we're gonna right click on this, we're gonna go to modify, and we're just gonna change this to a one. There we go, that's done, and we can close this. We're gonna see that it hasn't done anything yet, but if we go to settings, and under personalization, we can scroll down to taskbar. So now under taskbar behaviors, so now we can change the alignment to the left side, we can close all of this, and we can reboot. Okay, now we're rebooted, so we should be able to not see the Windows 10 start menu. So apparently they've gotten rid of this now. Let's go back in registry editor, just to make sure that's still there. We have show classic and it's still set to one. We're on the left side and it still opens the old one. That fix to get the old start menu back is now gone. So for the time being, I'm just going to delete that since it doesn't work anyway. So that was a fix, but it's no longer a fix. Another thing I'm gonna show you, but I also can't show you, is if we go to local machine, and we go to system, then we go to control set 001, and then in here for control, we can create a new sub key. This one here is called boot control. And now in here, we can add a new 32-bit D word, which is called boot progress animation. And now if we set this value to one, it will actually load the Windows 10 X boot screen when it's loading with the Windows 10 X progress as it's loading with that little circle thing or whatever. But unfortunately for me on this laptop, the UEFI settings force the ROG icon to show up and there's no way to actually disable that to see the Windows UEFI icon. So if you're using a laptop where you can turn off the motherboard supplier UEFI icon on boot, then this will enable the Windows 10 X one. But for me, I can't disable this, so there's no point in me even having this. But that's how you do it if you have that option. The last thing that I wanna do in here while we're still in registry editor is changing the size of the taskbar itself because there's no option to actually change the size anymore. However, there is, but you have to do it through registry editor because they don't actually have anything in the settings for this. So for that, we're gonna go to H key current user, software, Microsoft, and then Windows, and then current version, and then we're gonna go to explore and advanced, exactly where the old start menu should have taken place. And what we're gonna do in here is we're going to create a new D word, and this one is gonna be called taskbar SI for size. So taskbar SI. Now these are case sensitive. Now in here, we can modify this. We're gonna have three sizes. So zero is going to be the smallest and that's what I'm going to be picking. One is gonna be medium, which it's on right now. 
and then two is going to be large so if you actually want it to be even bigger so now this could be beneficial if you have a 4k display if you want to run it at 100 percent scaling while still maintaining the taskbar to actually be usable but for me i like to have the most amount of screen real estate possible so i'm going to be using zero so that's done and now we can reboot again for those changes to be made so now that we're back in, you can see that it is much smaller now. It's taking up significantly less space than it normally would be. So now to go a step further, let's go to personalization. So first off, let's change the wallpapers. So we can change the picture every 30 minutes, every one day, or even just every one minute. So that's a nice feature to have. However, I just want the simplicity of nothing ever moving. So I'm just gonna pick a single picture and now in here, browse, and I'm gonna pick the photo that I want. Now, one thing when you're picking these photos is this laptop here has two displays. So I can right click on a photo and I can select which monitor I want it for. Now, why there are two monitor ones, I really have no idea. Seems to be there for everything. Let's see what happens. Let's do monitor one. Well, that changed monitor one. Let's do this monitor one. Nope, it literally just has a repeating element here. So that's a bug. Now I don't have monitor two being screen recorded right now, so you can't see it, but I'm just going to pick the wallpapers. So I have two wallpapers here. So this one is for monitor one. This one is for monitor two. So they are the same. The one on the second display just doesn't have text over it. So it's not as repetitive. Now with this theme created and everything's fine, I could save it. So that way this would be a saved theme, but it's just two wallpapers. So I'm really not concerned. I want to turn off the recycle bin. But before I do that, I'm going to open File Explorer, and now in this quick access menu here, I didn't know this was a thing, and a couple people in the comments from the last video, they have posted that you can just drag this and bring it right over here. Look at that. And now, when we right click, we have the recycle bin, just like how I normally want it, because you can't drag this onto File Explorer anymore. So that was a fix to one of the issues that I saw there. So now that we have a quick access to the recycle bin when needed, we can remove the recycle bin from the desktop. Now the lock screen, again, I just want a single picture. And for that one, I'm just gonna keep it clean and I'm going to use one of the Windows 11 ones here. It kind of matches the, like, the color theme that I'm going for here. So it's classy, it works, it's built in, I like it. I'm gonna disable these fun facts, tips, tricks, and more on your lock screen, because realistically, who needs any of that? So I picked none for lock screen status, so that way there's nothing on it, just keep it as clean as possible. So I'm gonna keep the lock screen background on while I'm on the sign-in screen. Now the touch keyboard, I have no intention on using that at all, so I'm just not gonna to touch anything there. For start, like I mentioned, I disabled all of the recommended apps and settings and everything that it's gonna bring up. Now this here could be useful, to have settings, file explorer, documents, blah, 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 all of that listed, because when you open it, you can rearrange these wherever you want, so you could have all of your folders right across the top for quick access, and then your apps from there, which is why if you could get rid of the stupid recommended setting, then you could have all of your pinned apps all the way down, and it'd be super clean, it would be just like an app drawer with the most important things at the top, exactly where you want it, but instead you only get half of it, there's nothing you can do about it. So hopefully that is fixed in a later update. And I just want to remove essentially everything that's here. I'm not gonna be using any of that, I'm not gonna be using this, Nope, don't need that. Yep, okay, so that's uh, that's fine. So I'm just gonna have Nano Miner for mining and then OBS for when I'm making these videos. So now another thing that is just something that Microsoft had decided that this is just gonna be more towards tablets is that all the icons and everything are spaced out really big. Now, depending on your resolution, this does change. On my Dell XPS 12, when I was testing, these are really spaced out apart because it has a touch screen and it recognizes that it's a touch screen. So it spaces them out a lot. So there's no accidental touches on something that you don't want. But considering that this is a laptop, there's no reason for that. So all we have to do is just click these little three dots here, go to options. Now under view, we can change this to decrease size between items, compact view, and we can enable that. So now everything's closer together. It's hard to see just because this is not a touch device. It's much more noticeable on a touch device or a touch screen computer, but it's just something that I like to have. Just like my Windows 10 video for how to clean that up a little bit, 
back into the folder options here. And I'm going to change this to this PC and I'm going to disable all of the frequently used apps and everything just so it's not caching a whole bunch of stuff that's taking up space. This is how it's going to open every time. Open File Explorer. There we go. Boom. Done. It's just like how a normal computer should be. Now let's just unpin all of the things that I'm not going to be readily using all the time. And then as for these ones, we can uninstall, uninstall Spotify, uninstall Netflix. I don't have Twitter. Well, actually, no, I made a Twitter for that live stream thing, but I also deleted it right after. So I, I had one. Instagram, nope, don't have that. Photoshop Express, nope, I have full Photoshop. Alarms and clock, don't need to see that. Notepad, use that. Paint, sure. File Explorer, movies and TVs, nope. This is looking extremely stupid. Like there's no reason that this needs to be like this. So I'm really hoping this is a Windows 8 scenario where they just kind of like threw this together really quick and then realized that everybody hates it. So they switched it. So like, you know, maybe a Windows 11.1 will come out or something like that where this entire section is just going to be pinned apps. And I had no idea that there was an entire community of people who love the tiles. And I even found tons of customization stuff for tiles, and I gotta say, I'm kinda into it. I'm a little bit late to the game, considering that tiles are now dead. Ideally, this would be a really good scenario, is to just have it open to all apps, and then everything here just shows right away, and it's all good. But one thing about that is, look at how much space this is taking up. So if we just, you know, change the size of the icons, over here, maybe make them a little bit bigger or smaller depending on your taste, and then just fill it up, then we could fit tons of programs all in this one page here without scrolling or anything, and it makes it extremely seamless and very fast to use. So that's something that I really hope that they bring into a new update, because this sucks, and <laughs> honestly it really sucks that they removed the ability to enable the Windows 10 start menu, because that was kind of cool and I wanted to show that off, but now it's gone on this latest update. We're gonna go back into settings, and we're just gonna clean up this area over here. So on the system tab here, we're gonna go to notifications, and I'm gonna turn them all off. Clear all notifications, they're all gone, they're not coming back up, they're gone, perfect, done. Now, these icons right here. I hate tons of icons showing. I'd prefer them to all be in this little folder drawer pop-up thing. Personalization, go to the taskbar, taskbar corner overflow, and we can change these so these never show. But you'll notice there's no way to turn the microphone off, and there's no way to turn off what keyboard I'm using. Now the only way I've really found around this, at least for the keyboard, is to go to accessibility. We can go to the keyboard, and then down here at the bottom, language and region, we can select which ones are here. So because this is a US keyboard, I'm going to remove the English Canada, and you can see now that it's gone. And now for the microphone itself, we just have to right click it and go to microphone privacy settings, and we can turn off the microphone because I'm using an external microphone, so it really doesn't matter at all. So we can just turn that off. And now the icon's gone, but you can still hear me because of the external microphone. But there's no way to get rid of that icon while actually using the microphone. And as for all of these right here, there's nothing. You can't do anything else with it. So we can change what comes up here. We can move them around or pin different things, unpin them, etc. We can add shortcuts to things. So it's very much like the notification area on Android now. There's no way to remove these icons. So making it a super clean situation, just like Windows 10, where there's absolutely nothing, just the clock, and then there's just the start menu, and then your apps and everything are in the middle. No, that's gone. You can't do it. And one thing that really bothers me with this is the fact that you can't have the start menu on the left and the apps in the middle, which means that there's just this giant void area on the left side of the screen where the, the, the start button doesn't exist anymore. So this whole area on the left side is just completely unused. So whoever did the layout for all of this should probably look into doing a better job because having the icon over here on the left at least puts usability to the entire display. So that's how I keep it. Would prefer the icons to be in the middle, but Taskbar X does not work on Windows 11, so I can't move these to the middle. However, with programs that do work, we can install Auto Dark Mode. So now we can launch this, we can enable automatic theme switching, and we'll just do sunrise to sunset. Now in here it wants location service, so that way it knows when sunrise and sunset is on. Then you can set your default location, that's it. 
It knows that sunrise is going to be at 6.05 a.m. and sunset is going to be at 9.58 p.m. So at 9.58 p.m. this is automatically going to switch to dark mode. So that way during the day you're not straining your eyes because everything is bright, there's less reflections that impact things or brighter natural lighting that's taking over your screen making it hard to see, which also means that you can have your brightness down further to save battery life because these are not OLED panels so you're not saving battery life by using white or black, the entire display is illuminated no matter what. And then at night it switches to dark mode so that way you're not blinding yourself. Now another cool thing here is you can also make it so it switches the wallpaper. So you can have a light and dark mode wallpaper if you want. So right here you can configure the desktop background and you could have it with a wallpaper for the light theme and a wallpaper for the dark theme. But I have the wallpaper set, that's how I want it forever, so it's good, so I'm not doing anything else. Now there's some other settings and everything in here. And now I highly recommend that if you're gonna be using this, you should donate. The developer who made this is an absolute genius and this is a feature that literally should have been in Windows years ago. There's, there's no reason for it. So I highly, highly recommend this app. It is free, you don't have to pay for anything but I suggest that you donate because they did amazing work. Now, just to test this out, at 9.58 p.m., it should switch. So let's adjust the time. Okay, so we don't want to set the time automatically and we want to change the time to 9.57. Change, perfect. And it should automatically switch in about a minute. There we go, automatic dark mode, again. 6.05 a.m. is when it should switch back over to light mode, but you can see that everything switched over to dark mode. It's completely system-wide. So we will go back to here and we'll change this to 6.04 a.m. Perfect, so it's still dark mode. And now in roughly a minute, it's gonna automatically switch back to light mode. There we go, back to light mode. Then if we had the switching wallpapers, it would also do the same thing. But this tool is absolutely fantastic. I love it. So if this is something that you're into, then I highly recommend you give this a shot because this wasn't even updated for Windows 11 and it still works perfectly. And now in this latest version here, 22000.65, if you right click on the battery and go to battery saver settings, you can actually change the power profile right here in settings. So slowly, they are getting rid of control panel because more and more control panel options are being integrated into settings as one giant communal app for everything, which is great. I'm 100% for that. Less individual apps, more mega conjoined apps. That's the better solution for this, which apparently didn't go towards their designers when they made this, where you have three sections for your apps. That's how I cleaned up Windows 11. So if you found something here, then like or dislike it or subscribe or join the members program or don't do any of it. I'm not telling you what to do.